Hi, and welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is a show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. Today's guest will be helpful not only to those aspiring entrepreneurs, but also to those interested in improving their lives. Bianca Jade is a wellness expert with half a million followers who forecasts and reports on emerging trends in the health world for national syndications such as the Today Show, CBS Morning News, Dr. Oz, and regional affiliates across the country. And she's also the founder of Misfit, a site that shares wellness, health, and fitness advice. And her mission is to get people excited about exercise and wellness by revealing the fun and sexy side of the industry. Bianca, it is wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. I checked out your site and I've watched a lot of your stuff and learned a lot, to be honest with oh, you. No. <laughs> you have so much information about health, wellness, fitness, beauty. I mean, you cover it all, but your focus is really on health and wellness. And I'd love to hear your backstory on why you decided to start in that industry. So... Going way back, I think, you know, I was around 14 or 15 years old, and I just really loved fitness. I remember, you know, getting rollerblades as a gift uh, <laughs> one year, and then I remember, like, at 15, um, my parents told me I could have a trainer, and every oh, weekend I would work fancy. out. Yeah, I would work <laughs> out. Me and a girlfriend would work out with a trainer, and she really inspired me to, you know, stay fit through college. I mm -hmm. played sports and that kind of thing, but you know, fitness was just like a really important, you know, thread woven into my life. So when um, after you know several careers, um, I really had the opportunity to kind of decide what am I going to do as like my passion job? Because right. I feel like we have the jobs that we sort of, oh, so you know, true. like feel. the jobs that pay the bills and then the job you really want to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or the jobs that like you think you have to do coming out of school. And then you get this opportunity and it comes to everyone at different points in their life to like, to really go for it. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, and I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to do fitness. Um, and I think, you know, I was lucky in that, when I had this opportunity to really go after a dream mm -hmm. and and essentially like for what had been for me a hobby. You were very new in the industry. I believe you started your blog in 2009. Yeah, I was actually and working on it 2008, but wow. officially like I had a launch party. So and why did you decide to do blogging? I mean, back back in that time, it wasn't as easy as it is today where you can easily get website templates and things like that. Oh no, I, I really, I made my whole website like, I did the back end work and everything, and I really can't believe I did that back then. I am so impressed because that is so challenging. I'm impressed with myself because <laughs> I wouldn't do it today, and there's so many apps and everything that make people's lives easier. And you didn't have any of no. that, so you had to do everything manually in the beginning. I did. Wow. I did. And I think, you know, that's part of, um, that's like really helped me to become a problem solver. Mm -hmm. And I'm never really scared to like get my hands dirty, but the reason I wanted to blog was because my headhunter, I had a career in advertising mm -hmm. and- You were a creative director, I believe. I was, right? I was between jobs. Mm -hmm. And my headhunter was like, you know, Bianca, to set yourself apart and to really get, you know, the job that you want at the salary that you want, you're gonna have to show that you've been working on something. Mm. And I was like, well, what the hell have I been working on? I've been working on getting a job. So my headhunter was like, well, could you blog about something? <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I, you know, I, I, I realized I had to do this special project, right? right? So I started a blog about fitness, fashion, and trends in fitness mm. that would help women like myself who are very, you know, fashionista mm -hmm. and like, you know, I'm just going to say it. I'm a little uppity. I like nice clothes I mean, and nice things. I mean, your outfit's fabulous. The Thank first you. thing I said when I saw you today is I love your outfit. Thank the you. off the shoulder look, it's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> well, a lot of times, you know, girls who are really into like fashion and beauty and hair, mm -hmm. Um, they don't want to work out, you know, because it involves getting sweaty, sweaty and gross and gross. I wanted to create a destination, you know, for all women, but specifically these type of women that were hesitating, um, on living, you know, a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. through fitness activity. So that was like the beginning, that was the notion. Yeah. And, um, and with this, you know, theme, 
I was planning on getting the job in advertising of my dreams. Uh, but really what it led me to was a whole new career and launching my own business. So when, when did that shift and you realize, wait a minute, I can actually make this into a real business? Well, okay. I mean, I, I didn't get the job of my dreams in advertising. And, but now you, know, you have the job right, of your dreams, right. so it all worked right. out. <laughs> but I remember thinking like, oh, I started this blog and I'm still not getting, you know, uh, job offers. Um, and then I was like, you know, it, this isn't just a project anymore. This is something that I would like to build into a full scale brand. Mm -hmm. So I took it from, you know, this blogging project into creating a 360 degree company. And that's actually like, you know, what I was trained to do from my career in advertising. Right. So you talked about, you know, you started to have uh, some ways you monetized it. What was the first way you decided you found to monetize the blog. Well, so I started with the ads and the ads were making pennies. Yeah. And then I started reading um, and following uh, different bloggers mm -hmm. who were, you know, giving advice on monetization. And I learned that like really the only way to make money was to partner with brands or, uh, or ad firms that were uh, creating opportunities that were relevant to your content. Yeah. So I started putting ads up that, you know, that matched a blog post that I was writing about. So if I was, you know, writing about like, let's say Athleta or Lululemon or something mm -hmm. like that, then I would integrate ads for those products that I was reviewing mm -hmm. and get a commission on them. Still, So you were using affiliate revenue. To affiliate revenue, yeah. still very low in terms of, you know, bringing in any income. Um, but it starts, it's the starting seeds. And then once exactly. you build them all up, they all, yeah. And then once those brands started realizing that I was placing ads, they were contacting me directly mm. and they wanted to form partnerships. So I didn't make money, you know, com being completely candid here, I didn't make money the first three years of running my business. Yeah. Like it was really putting a lot of money into it, taking the risk of, you know, thinking what could this turn into and where, mm. where could I be, you know, where, where are the areas that I could be making money mm -hmm. from? Uh, so I'm really glad that, you know, that I had uh, the money saved to be able to do that because in the end, um, wow, that income came in very fast. It's so much of this in the beginning is self-promoting. Yes. <laughs> um, because you're, you're the one that's running the business. You're your best supporter. And so you have to create, you have to like boost yourself. You do. And you have to create a team as well. And, you know, yeah. my agent was part of the team yeah. that I was creating as my support system. Um, you know, I had to hire attorneys. Um, you know, I was trademarking um, different uh, slogans, catchphrases. And of course, Misfit had yeah, to be so trademarked. Yeah, so tell me about Misfit. Why, why call it Misfit? It just was like an urban way of saying like, you know, the girl that works out like really. Like misfit. And misfit. Like fitness. Yes. Misfit with two S's was already taken. And okay. it was owned so by So you got it someone. a little more trendy with the Z's. Right. I see. And you know, I'm mm -hmm. sure you know the trademark game is, it takes a while. Yeah. And so when you are building your company and you're, you figured out like what your name is and everything, you got to really hustle to get that trademark in um, and to make sure that you own all of your branding. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never thought that that would really, you know, um, be an issue down the road. I just thought, okay, everybody has to do this. They say I have to do it. But actually someone tried to use Misfit. No way. And doing all of that right at the get-go of starting my business saved my butt because they were planning on going on NBC <gasps> using my my brand name. And so I was able with my team what, to the, uh, do a cease and desist and protect my company. So these are kind of the things that like you really have to hustle to do at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're annoying things. Like they take a lot of time. You have to wait. There's a lot of paperwork and expense involved, but that's part of building a business. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of fun in terms of risk taking and getting creative, but there's also that side of like really, you know, learning to be um, uh, very organized and, you know, know how to protect yourself because you could build this empire and then one little thing could crumble it. It's so true. 
You mentioned you did some travel hosting. I did. Yes. I also do travel you hosting. You were like the so travel I'm diva. I love all your stuff. Oh, please. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to the fitness diva over here, but I would love to hear about what you do for travel hosting. So for travel, um, it all comes from really that that fitness foundation yeah. of going on trips that are active, that mm-hmm. involve a lot of adventuring. Like adventure, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and um, things like swinging from ropes. Um, I've climbed... Um, I went to Nevis, which is um, an island right near St. Kitts. A lot of people are familiar Ooh. with St. Kitts. It's, this is in the West Indies. Um, but Nevis is a very, very small island that a lot of people haven't been to. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's natural. It's just, it's like a jungle. Um, and there's not really much in terms of commercialism. I worked with the Board of Tourism there. And the first day that I arrived on the island, very jet lagged, they were like, you're climbing a mountain. Oh, great. And I was like... <laughs> Okay, this sounds really exciting. And they're like, no, it's like our one really big mountain. Oh my God. And it's called Nevis Peak and it's just vertical. Oh, so, what? <laughs> yes. So basically, I had a guide and we were climbing it like you're climbing and you're a lagged. climb wall, essentially. <laughs> I had no gloves, but it was an adventure. Yeah, you know, for it sure. was like, <laughs> and I had, you know, all of my cameras and everything. And uh, it was just me and this tour guide. And it was just like, even though there was so much pain involved, um, <laughs> and I literally did not expect, you know, this level of difficulty, right. like that's what it was all about. But I was able to write a piece about this experience and tell people everything they need to do it right. Yeah. And and that's really like what traveling is about, you yeah. know, kind of like making those mistakes so your audience doesn't have to. Like, that is so true. I'm constantly telling people like, you know, my life isn't glamorous. It's like one like crazy, you know, scenario to the next. And um, people usually don't believe me, but I I definitely have all these stories. And and actually, I appreciate it. I like living my life Mm -hmm. sort of in the unknown. Yeah. That's probably why I'm I'm an entrepreneur. Exactly. Is that why you're an entrepreneur? Yeah. (laughs) You know, we're we're comfortable with risk. And you say your life is not glamorous. but it does seem glamorous. And oh, girl, you know your life I isn't know, glamorous either. I, that's why I wanted to talk about it because people have this perception, uh, which kind of we created because we post the best parts oh, yeah. of our lives, right? And that's we'll what you do. Edited. And so they don't see how much work it, it actually takes. I kind of refer to it as the iceberg. So you see just the tip of the iceberg, but all of this underneath is really what's going on behind the scenes. And so people will get this really cohesive, well put together blog post, but what they didn't see is your blood, sweat and tears of you climbing this mountain after a, being jet lagged on a flight and you still have to try to make it look n- nice and yeah. glamorous in some way and get all the shots. It's, it's very, it's very exhausting. And I actually do, um, usually on Instagram stories or mm-hmm. IGTV, I will post, you know, the kind of like behind the scenes yeah. and sort of like the outtakes of, right. of my adventures because I find that people sort of like that stuff they do. better. It's you know? more relatable. Yeah, it is relatable. Um, so um, I, I don't always love those things because obviously like, you know, you don't have makeup on, your hair looks all crazy when you're climbing a mountain. Yeah, but it's <laughs> you relatable. Know? And um, speaking of things that are relatable, one of the things that you've shared that's really inspired me is your story of freezing your eggs. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because yeah. <laughs> I think it's so brave of you to share that story. It's something that so many women have considered and, and you actually did it. So tell us tell us about that. Like, why did you side share that with the world? So um, I love telling people that I was one of the first because now everybody does it and it doesn't seem that special. Um, but uh, it's still pretty special. It was, yeah, it was, it was special for me. And you know, um, I'm, I'm a very complicated person as I think anybody who decides to take on a career, you know, in front of the camera (laughs) or, you know, whether it's YouTube or TV or, Mm -hmm. you know, shares their life publicly through, uh, you know, through the internet, Mm -hmm. um, we are complicated people and you see a side of us, but there are all these other sides that you don't often get to see. And this was me, um, becoming, you know, an onion and really peeling back the layers of, you know, what I wanted 
out of my life beyond this career that I had created. Um, so I've always wanted to be a mother. Mm-hmm. And, um, and what I realized through the process of freezing my eggs was that I wanted to do it no matter what, whether I had a partner, mm-hmm. you know, as in a husband or boyfriend, yeah. um, or not. And that is something that totally goes against how I was raised, how I grew up, um, and what my family really, you know, ultimately wants for me. Right. So it was, it was a, it was a difficult piece, but it was something that like, you know, I felt like we were talking about how you create, we create value for, for our viewers. Right. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I didn't want to wake up one day, whether it was in my late thirties or mid forties, whatever, regretting that I never, uh, froze my eggs and that, you know, didn't at least, you know, have the insurance of possibly being able to have my own child. And I'm so glad I did it because it's the one video Mm -hmm. that I get messages about you know, on a weekly basis, uh, right. women that are much like me that are single, mm-hmm. you know, not married, mm-hmm. um, in their late thirties, early forties that are thinking, can I do this? Right. You know? Right. And so it tells them that they can, but they it can. also is a realistic video saying, Hey, this doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. You don't just blog. You also are a show host, a, a on camera host. Girl, I'm like, we are so similar. Yeah, I'm we like are. I'm, I'm just trying to beat you through this, <laughs> through this like glass thing. <laughs> uh, tell me about how did you get into that? So, um, when I, when I first started blogging, I think I told you that like at the beginning it was like really slow going. Yeah. I wasn't making a lot of money. Then all of a sudden it was like I got all this attention. Right. Um, Nike discovered me oh, and put that's me huge. Yeah, Congrats. He put me on a panel with uh, Eva Chen and a few mm. of these other like well known bloggers. A lot of them were like kid bloggers, which oh. was like a thing in fashion. Interesting. And uh, and. From there, it was like I was getting all these press inquiries, like, can you come on our show and do a fitness fashion show? Um, Because fitness fashion was like a new concept. Totally. And Lululemon was like just doing so well. And people wanted like fitness fashion shows with Lululemon clothes and just all this like active wear. And like there was this new term of athleisure floating around. Mm. So I got to ride that wave. And what I found was I really loved being on camera yeah. and I loved talking to people about products. Yeah. So I started uh, booking a lot of work uh, on morning shows and all these health shows where I would talk about, you know, pain points that people were having and solutions that could be solved through products. Right. And of course, those brands that sell the products love that I was doing that. And, yeah. in, you know, many uh, situations, I was able to get paid by those brands brands to present those products. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't even know that was an option, but it makes sense. That is an option. And you can do that with anything. I think as long as it's coming from an authentic perspective and you're not just like doing it because a brand is paying you to do it, it all, it all sort of benefits everybody. Yeah. So in addition to being a social media influencer, a show host, you also are a supporter for female empowerment and social issues. And you even raised $50,000 towards uh, the Special Olympics and other uh, social programs like cancer research. So thank you for doing that. Why did you decide to uh, do that? Besides the obvious reasons, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Well, everyone wants to give back. And we're so busy running our businesses that we have don't have a lot of time to do it. So whenever... People approach me and that like opportunity to fundraise like really synced up with, you know, my mission, Mm -hmm. um, the mission of Misfit, which is to help people move and thrive and, and all of that. Um, I was like, yeah, I can do this. Um, it's easy to integrate into what I'm doing. Um, and you know, there were, they had to be things that really like spoke to my heart, like the special Olympics, like, Hey, these are athletes. These are like the bravest athletes. And, uh, so yeah, I, I did this whole thing with them where I repelled off a building. Oh my gosh, what? Yeah, in St. Louis, There's Missouri. There's a lot of repelling and climbing. There are lots. Your there, life is just everything that with horrifies me: needles, climbing, jumping. But you do yeah. it all. You push past the fear. I do, and that was so worth it. Um, when I repelled down the building, one of the Special Olympic athletes uh, congratulated me and hugged me, and. Oh. It was so cool. She was like, I've done that five times, but nice job. And I was like, oh my God. (laughs) Um, Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was really funny. And I actually ended up interviewing her about like all the repelling she's done. So like these were just like 
cool, fun things where fundraising was like, it wasn't a job. It just ended up being something that I found the time to do. Yeah. The last uh, charity that I did something for was uh, the Honduran Children's Cancer Organization mm-hmm. um, in, in Honduras. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a uh, hospital that I had volunteered at throughout my entire life wow. um, when visiting Honduras. And my my aunt is actually the president of the, of the foundation. Oh, wow. And so... Um, it's a very emotional place to visit because there are a lot of these kids that um, come from poor families yeah. that are there because they're in the terminal stages of their disease it's really sad, and life. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was last there in June of mm-hmm. last year, and my my aunt took me to a palliative room where a little girl was probably going to die, you know, oh in a couple of hours, and her father was cradling her. And I remember thinking like what can I do? Like, right. what can I do for these kids? Like, even if it's just to make like those last few hours of life more comfortable. Yeah. So, um, so my aunt and I were like crying in the room and like, you know, I'm looking at this little girl's father and I'm like, don't worry. I'm going yeah. um, I will, her name will not like be yeah. forgotten. And I created a, uh, um, a GoFundMe page, yeah. Uh, basically honoring this little girl and her life, um, mm-hmm. and we raised um, pretty quickly five thousand dollars for the hospital. So um, you know, it's it's kind of like in the same way that we have passion yeah. for our companies. Like I think you have to have passion for um, for for these organizations that are just you know trying to help people that have no way to help themselves. Right. I'm so happy that you're sharing that with people here and with your audience, because if we can use our platform to do social good, then it just helps everyone and it helps share your message. And it relates back to who yes. you are as a person. Well, I think, you know, I mean, we're both storytellers, right? And yeah. I think these stories are um, so necessary um, for you know, people in our position to be sharing and constantly sharing, no matter what, uh, no matter what point we get to um, in our in our careers and success as an influencer, as a host, as um, you know, whatever whatever else I become throughout my career, <laughs> I will always you know tell these stories because I think this is how we learn about you know humanity. This is how yeah. we learn about our neighbors. Um, and this is how we also break down, you know, barriers and prejudice and, you know, racism, anti-Semitism, all the stuff that like has been, you know, mm-hmm. resurging lately. Oh, a hundred percent. So you've done so many great things already. Uh, what is next for Misfit? Okay. So I haven't really like said this out loud, Ooh, but exclusive. <laughs> I've been looking at homes. I'm thinking of leaving the city and, Ooh. uh, setting myself up for writing a book because it's the only way it's ever going to happen. So you're thinking maybe of moving to the countryside and writing a book? Yes. That's so artistic of you. I've been in the city for 16 years. Wow. And I'm kind of ready to focus on bigger projects Mm -hmm. that take 500% concentration. Yeah, well, that will be one. It's been so lovely having you on the show, Bianca. It's been a blast. I have one final question for you. Okay. Do you have any advice for aspiring entrepreneurs like yourself? Yes. Um, Get comfortable with being uncomfortable Mm. is the first thing (laughs) um, because uh, it just has to become like a state of being, you know? (laughs) Constant. (laughs) Right. It's accurate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. don't be too hard on yourself. Like you will be at the beginning. Yeah. It's just part of it. Like, and then, you know, we talked about like not taking anything personal. So Mm -hmm. you can't, you can't be hard on yourself. You will mess up. You will, you know, hate yourself for some of the things you've done. (laughs) You got to let it go. Um, My last one is get a dog. And the reason I say this, you need to get one then. The reason I say this is because a dog brings perspective, introspection, and um, helps you not be so sedentary as an entrepreneur because sometimes we become chained or glued to our desk or a project. Yeah. And a dog means you have to, and you have to walk your own dog, that's part of it. It means you, ha- you have to step away and breathe and take a break. Yeah. So after years of wanting a dog, I finally got Frida Doggy. That's actually her Instagram handle. Aww. 
And she's a 10 year old Chihuahua. So we're both like aging gracefully together. And she's incredible. Not only has she like increased my production and efficiency, she's just helped me like really see the world in a more positive way wow. and breathe. Cause I have to go on like four, four to five walks a day. And it's so healthy. That's so good to know because I really want a dog and um, maybe I should get one. I, it's time. Yeah, it's, it's one time. of my top tips Especially for now. entrepreneurs. Yeah. So it's been wonderful having you on the show, Bianca. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks to everyone who tuned in today. If you want to learn more about Bianca Jade, visit MizFit.com and follow her on Instagram at Bianca Jade. With her expert advice on wellness, I can guarantee her tips will help you become your best self. So that is all for this edition of School of Hustle. Keep up with all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you stream and download podcasts. And if you like what you heard, please consider leaving a review, share with your friends, and subscribe to our show. We'll see you next time. Bye.